In a previous video, we demonstrated the machining of a 0.6mm screw, but that wasn't the end of the story. In this video, we explore the making process behind hand machined watch screws in more detail, but don't worry, you don't need to have seen the previous one to follow along. Here I make a slightly larger screw, 1mm in diameter, so you can see exactly what's going on, but we will revisit the 0.6mm screw later on. I begin by turning the diameters that make up each part of the screw, starting with the threaded portion, followed by the head. On this particular screw I machine a point on the end. You will see this green coloured blue tack like material during the video. This is called Rodico and is really useful for cleaning small parts such as this watch screw. Here I use a die to cut the thread. I back the die off occasionally to help clear the swarf. Using a die though is not the only way to form a thread on small components and we will show an alternative approach later in the video. This is a good point to roughly polish some of the surfaces. I begin with some fine emery paper on a piece of plywood. I make sure every surface is addressed, including the underneath of the screw head and the thread itself. I use a wooden toothpick with some polishing paste to remove the scratches left by the emery paper. I take care not to over polish the thread as to maintain the original thread profile as much as possible. When it comes to cutting the screw off, one option is to use a parting tool. An alternative method is to simply use a piercing saw. The screw is then reversed in the collet to work on the head. Perhaps an unnecessary step, but a burnishing tool removes the sharp edge from the screw head. For those of you who saw our earlier video, you will know that I used a piercing saw to cut the screwdriver slot. Here however, I use a slitting saw mounted on a separate spindle instead. Watch screws are made from a high carbon steel which allows us to change the microstructure of the material to a martensitic phase. Practically this means that when I heat it up enough and cool it down quickly enough, the steel hardens and as a result the screw is stronger. However, when I heat it up enough, the surface of the screw will oxidise which is undesirable. To circumvent this I machine a simple pot which I fill with boric acid. I put the screw into the boric acid pot and heat the whole assembly. I then quench the pot and screw together in water. I check the screw is hard with a scribe. If it skims over the surface without scratching, I know the heat treatment was successful. I gave the screw a rough polish earlier but now it's time to finish the job, starting with the slot. I use various polishing equipment to achieve the best polish I can. In fact, there is a bit of an art to polishing screws. There are various jigs and even machines specifically made for this job, but here I keep it simple and just stick to the vise and the lathe. Here you might think it's job done and surely now it's time for a cup of tea, 
But there is one more important final step, and that is bluing the screw. This not only makes it look pretty, but it also softens the screw ever so slightly, since in its current state it is too hard and therefore brittle. To blue the screw it simply needs to be heated to the correct temperature. This can be done directly, usually on a bed of swarf or a plate to allow close control of the temperature, but here I melt some potassium nitrate and dunk the screw. The temperature when it becomes a clear liquid happens to be the perfect temperature to blue the steel. A word of caution though is probably best not to use a ceramic cup for this purpose. What happens if you can't source a die the right size? Well there's an alternative approach called single point threading, which is what I'm doing here on a relatively large scale. The lathe spindle is connected to the tool such that when the workpiece is revolved once, the tool traverses by a thread pitch. On the scale of a watch screw this is very challenging, but Alistair decided to take on the challenge with a minuscule 0.6mm thread. He begins by making the screw cutting tool from the same high carbon steel used for the screw itself. This means that Alistair can file the tool roughly to shape and then heat treat it as before. However, after the initial hardening phase, rather than tempering all the way back to blue, he tempers the tool to a straw colour instead. This is harder than the blued steel, but soft enough to minimise the risk of the tool chipping from being too brittle. Once hardened, the final tool profile can be ground using the tool and cutter grinder. Unfortunately we don't currently own a watchmaker's lathe with screw cutting capability, so this has to be done on the Myford Super 7 lathe. Nevertheless, a well adjusted Myford should be capable of the job. Alistair fits the collet chuck in the spindle taper and touches up the main tool in the grinder. It's important to use a sharp tool for machining small parts. To set up for screw cutting, Alistair adjusts the gears connecting the spindle to the lead screw and sets the gearbox accordingly. As far as we can tell, the screw cut thread comes out perfectly. To finish the screw from here, the same methods as we used previously would be employed. Now I will pass on to Hazel to introduce the sponsor of this video. This video is sponsored by Brilliant. If you're watching this video, chances are you're curious about the hidden science and engineering in everyday life. If so, Brilliant.org might be the perfect site for you. Brilliant's platform is designed to make learning physics, maths, and computer science as easy as possible. The library spans thousands of topics, from basic chemistry to cryptocurrency, and more lessons are added every month. To uncover more of the secrets behind the systems we rely on every day, take a look at Brilliant's How Technology Works course. Some of these lessons will even teach you about the tech that's allowing you to watch this very video. Brilliant's bite-sized lessons can be accessed on the go via your phone, tablet or computer so you can gradually master whole topics in as little as 15 minutes a day. To try everything Brilliant has to offer, free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash Cronova Engineering or click on the link in the description. The first 200 viewers to sign up will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Thanks for watching.